Best known as the talk show host in the bright and shining face of Bravo TV, Andy Cohen is opening up in a new book about his latest adventure, Life as the Father of Two Kids. Amna Nawaz has that conversation. Before he oversaw a reality TV empire, Andy Cohen grew up in St. Louis and worked as a producer at CBS News, later landing as a programming executive at Bravo TV, where he helped launch the popular Real Housewives franchise. I don't know. In its 17 years on the air, the brand stretched to more than 10 cities, reaching millions of fans. Cohen first stepped in front of the camera in 2009, hosting the late night talk show Watch What Happens Live. Known for its celebrity guests, boozy moments, and spilling secrets. What is the hardest drug? His profile has only grown. That just seems like an odd thing to say when hosting the network's reunion specials, launching his own radio channel on Sirius XM, and writing a series of best selling books. His latest, The Daddy Diaries, The Year I Grew Up, chronicles his day to day life and celebrity run ins in the year he welcomed daughter Lucy to his family, joining his son Ben. We recently sat down to talk about family, work, and what made him want to write another book. Um, I love writing. It's my fifth book. It's my third installment of the Andy Cohen Diaries series, which was uh, inspired by Andy Warhol's diaries, which I absolutely uh, loved, which are very uh, name droppy. Uh, they're very celebrity heavy, and they're very much New York stories. And this is all that with the overlay of having two kids as a single dad. Anyone who follows you online has seen your beautiful family, but tell us about your kids. My kids are great. Uh, they are four and one. The four-year-old loves being an older brother. I was writing the book during, everyone says terrible twos, but it's really terrible threes. Three's worse than two. Terrible. Three's like professional two-year-old. Exactly. Yes. Very, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we have some not down okay. drag outs okay. Okay. Uh, okay. during okay. the summer months right. of the uh, right. Daddy Diaries. But vacation's over, okay? I know my way around a group of Real Housewives, <laughs> which can be infuriating and exhausting. Mm -hmm. You can't get off the couch. Okay, is that a deal? So you know what? I jumped right into toddler fits. Uh, Not head that first. dissimilar. Exactly. You just let it play out. You write about the decision to have kids in the first place. You talk. You refer to this as the year that you grew up. Yeah. How are you different now? Oh than my you were gosh. Before? Starting in the happy way. I mean, yeah. I'm just a more grounded of a person. When you publish your diaries. You really look at what you do every day mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is my life, or this is my life that I'm putting out there for consumption. And I got to the point where I thought, is, you know, is this all there is? It's fun, everything's really fun, but I wanted to be grounded. You've also said your book is a bit of a statement on sort of pop culture in yeah, the year 2022 so. and how much things have changed. There's one line in the book where you say, housewives often are offensive on some level, but the line has moved over 16 years. How, yes. how has it moved? Well, I mean, producing a show about a group of politically incorrect, outspoken you know women. That's my opinion! In 2023, Don't in the age the of surgery, cancel culture me. and people hey, being offended by things you didn't know you could be offended by is a challenge. And so it's it's changed a lot. And just the brand itself, which is now very much an empire, it's yeah. changed you know, so own. much yeah. since the first season. They were living in townhouses. They weren't their own celebrity brands. Now right. they're full glam. You have a huge convention with thousands of people. They are their own celebrities yes. because of the show. Yes. Why do you think we have this fascination with this kind of television? I think shows? it is repl it is the modern soap opera. It is the soap opera of our time. Everybody will know. Never. Everybody Go will near know. my husband. I know that people who don't watch it, it's very easy to look at the clips and have a judgment. Yeah. But I think that the reason it's still on the air is that it's about friendship and motherhood and being a wife and a sister and family and a whole lot more. And there are things that ground it in relatability. It's also sometimes very aspirational. If it was just a drink toss or an offensive comment, it would not still be on the air, I promise. Like, there's no way. Would you let your kids watch the show one day? Eventually, Eventually absolutely, yeah. yes. Would you ever let them star in their own reality show? 
I would prefer that they not. <laughs> And by the way, the dad, people always say to me, would you ever star on a reality show? Yeah. This is as close as I would get. This yeah. is a year in, in my life, mm -hmm. but I'm in control of the edit. Did you edit yourself a lot in this? I edited myself, but I also pushed myself. Yeah. This is my fifth book, mm -hmm. and I know, and I learned in my first book, you have to push yourself. This is the most vulnerable I've ever been in a book. I gotta ask this too, because you, in the reunions you host with these housewives and your own show on Watch What Happens Live, you are a very skilled interviewer. Thank you. Because you know how to get people to share things that they probably wouldn't share otherwise. Yes. What makes a good interview for you? How do you do that? So I was a producer at CBS News, so I not only learned how to produce an interview, but I learned how much time four and a half minutes of TV time is when they're telling me in my ear. That's actually a lot of time to get something out of someone. Mm -hmm. So that was important training for me. But also, I think a genuine curiosity is important. It does give you a platform to talk about other things that you really care about, yes. too. You Why talk about LGBTQ rights, you talk about politics. Gay. This is one big dog whistle. You're do you feel that's just something you want to do, or do you feel like that's a responsibility right well, now? Well, as a gay American and as a Jewish American, two groups really under fire right now, yeah. I feel like if there are issues facing my community, I speak up about it. Never did I think that people would be fighting drag queens. Why do you think it, we're seeing that right now? Well, I think it's a distraction from what's really going on, and it's a way to fire up your base. Let's hate on the trans community and drag queens, two marginalized groups of people. And I'm sorry, but the biggest issue facing the world is not whether drag queens are performing. It's not an issue. You've talked about the heaviness, too, that comes with being a single father. Yes. Too. What do yeah. you mean by that? I think that's why I called it the year I grew up. I'm a happy-go-lucky guy. Yeah, But clear. Um, my resting mood when I wake up is happiness. The weight of being a single father really hit me this year. I had been for three years before Lucy came. Now, suddenly, there are two. I just want to be everything to them. You did say, I always felt light as a feather. This year, my feet feel firmly planted. I like how that feels. It sounds like you're in a good place. Yes. Are you ready for a third kid? No. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to scare me out of PBS NewsHour. <laughs> are you kidding me? You are joking, right? <laughs> I, we can I, talk about it later. I'm dancing as fast as I can. Andy Cohen, author of The Daddy Diaries, The Year I Grew Up. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. How fun. You can hear more from Andy Cohen online with Amna's lightning round of questions. From his dream guest to his favorite president, that's on our Instagram page.